So Lee, when you're looking at computer info and data, how do you read it and make the adjustments to the car? Well, you know, obviously uh, the, the most important thing is to be able to make good horsepower and apply that power to the racetrack. So the first thing you come in here and you look at your engine RPM to make sure your engine's going up to the RPM level that you're trying to get, get it to maintain at. And then the next thing that you would look at would be your, your rear wheel speed. And the combination of the two and how they come together is how you're applying the horsepower from the engine to the racetrack. And the run that you're looking at here is a 409 uh, run that we made testing at Charlotte on Monday. And it appears to be very, very good. We were comfortable with that run. Those are the real foundation of your data. Uh, you have tools in to look at as far as making horsepower goes, and you can look at your uh, your blower pressure uh, to see how much boost it has at the step of the throttle and how much it has at the finish line. Kind of gives you an indication of how good your supercharger is. Uh, the amount of fuel flow, we'll take the supercharger off and we'll put the fuel flow up there. Uh, the amount of fuel that's going in the engine also uh, gives you an idea on how much horsepower you're making. The more fuel you can successfully burn, the more power the engine makes. Um, your ignition timing, which is, uh, it's, we, can, uh, we can change the timing. As you can see, there's a, a lot of timing changes going on while the car's going down the racetrack. And the timing is a bit of a, let's say, programmed traction control system. Uh, if you take timing away from it, you're not producing as much power, and so you're not as apt to spin the tires as, it, as where you have a lot of timing in it. So it is a very, very good tool for applying the power to the racetrack and how much power you have is the ignition timing. Uh, we have we look at all kinds of different things. You can look, uh, look at, at the uh, exhaust gas temperatures to, to see how the engine's running. Uh, they're a little spread on this because the, the fuel system wasn't perfect, but they, all eight cylinders ran from the start to the finish line. Uh, and then you have a lot of math channels that are a combination of data applied with mathematics, like this particular one we're looking at here is tire slip. And uh, when it has a, an arch to it, you, it's a little slip. So once the car gets settled down from leaving the starting line, it's, it's a pretty nice graph, not much tire slip there. Um, this, then we have clutch slip, which is just a, a math channel that calculates the engine RPM versus the drive shaft speed. So having the computer gives you the ability to take raw data, things such as the engine RPM, the drive shaft speed, and then create a math channel that tells you the amount that the clutch is slipping. So you guys have a lot of things to look over, so for all those kids at home, math class and things like that, physics, they're definitely important, aren't they? It's extremely important. You know, uh, we work with a university uh, in Indianapolis, uh, IUPUI, and they have a, uh, you can get a degree in motorsports engineering today. And the class requirements to get that degree uh, the real foundation for us, mathematics, uh, all different types of mechanical engineering, uh, aerodynamic engineering, and, and it, to be successful out here in racing today, those students that go through and get those degrees are the future crew chiefs and team managers of these big race teams.